Warm welcome to our special series, Love You Zindagi, where we discuss issues which demand immediate attention and action in order to improve the prevailing conditions in our society. In today's episode, we will discuss healthcare in India. Despite being the world's sixth largest economy, India spends less than 1.5% of its GDP on public health. The healthcare system is riddled with lacunas in government initiatives, differences in healthcare quality between rural urban areas as well as between public and private healthcare. Let's try deliberate question debate on how India can overcome most of these issues. I'm delighted today to welcome all our special guests. I have with me Mr. Nachiket Moore, a banker by profession. He served as the national director for Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I have with me Dr. Anand Bang currently working with the Tata Trust as Advisor Health. We also have Dr. Opi Yadav. He is the CEO and Chief Consultant Cardiac Surgeon at the National Heart Institute, New Delhi. With me is also Shripad Desai, MD and Country Director, America's India Foundation. Mr. Desai has 25 years of experience across the healthcare sector. All right, so let's begin with Mr. Nachiket Moore. Big corporate hospitals today, Mr. Moore, have chosen to stay away from the Ayushman Bharat scheme. Uh, stating that the scheme is non-viable and that they are not able to meet their costs if they met our treatment at prices that the scheme demands. What is your take on Ayushman Bharat? Do you think it's a workable scheme, Mr. Moore? I think Ayushman Bharat's big impact will come because of the standards it sets for the entire health system. It is possible that the prices that they offer may be attractive to a certain group of hospitals and not the others but it will exercise a pressure, a downward pressure, on hospital prices across the entire system. It will set better quality benchmarks because it insists that the hospitals that it impanels meet a certain quality benchmark. It will change the manner in which customers <coughs> deal with hospitals even when they pay for it. So I'm personally very positive that the scheme's larger impact will be actually quite significant. One of the challenges in India is that we have a large unmet burden of disease. There are a number of people that are not well because they have hypertension, they have mental illness, they have many things. If today our structure, not the Shaivishman Bharat overall, mm -hmm. is hospital centric, what will happen is many more people than you anticipated will show up at hospitals. Any insurance design that is priced to assume a reasonable disease burden will have trouble because you get many more people than you expected. So you have to contain the disease burden of hypertension, for example, at primary care level in a large scale, mm -hmm. along with offering these hospital-based services. So that, I would say, is an important area of concern in any scheme, not this one. There are huge discrepancies in the geographical distribution of health professionals in rural and urban areas. Uh, and if I'm not wrong, you can correct me, around two-thirds of medical professionals work in urban areas, where less than 30% Indians live. What measures now can be taken to reduce that gap? Some good steps are being undertaken, whether it is changing the norms of postgraduate education or promoting nurse practitioner or possibly BSc in community health or making bond service mandatory for doctors. Mm -hmm. But of course, we need better execution of these good policies. But beyond that, I would point out two important aspects of how we can possibly bridge this. Number one, is to consider rural and tribal as separate entities. Mm -hmm. Generally, the discourse of tribal gets lost when the discourse is about rural. The second aspect, though, is even more important, on which we have marched some path forward, is the issue of community health worker. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a travesty that after having 8 lakh community health worker ASHA across the country, and after this many decades of proving that it works as a model, still we are unwilling to provide curative care through them. I consider that unethical to the least. You're a cardiologist, you're an ACE cardiologist at that. Now give us a larger understanding of what, say, urban India is in the grips of. Uh, you know, uh, you're talking about strokes, you're talking about heart disease. Uh, are these urban diseases? What are the red flags? Yeah, sure. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, they certainly are not just urban, though more in urban areas than rural areas, but they are very much present in the rural areas. Mm, yes. So that is one thing. And second is that we are genetically predisposed in the entire Southeast Asia. So the nature is against us. Now that nature is not distinguishing between the rural and the urban areas. So it plays out no matter even a second and third generation Indian based in America or Europe 
still has three times higher coronary artery disease than a native Caucasian person. So there is a genetic predisposition with us. We know that. So we are prone to heart attacks and strokes. On top of it, how you nurture is the second component. And that nurture also we have messed up with, with the kind of foods that we eat, with highly refined carbohydrates and saturated fats in anything and everything. And now we have the problem of pollution and those, they further add on to the problem. And lastly, the stress and the psychosocial factors, they are very, very important. The first and the most important thing people must realize that most of these are silent killers with no markers. The way you send your car mm -hmm. for a checkup, for a service every six months without any rattling sound, please make sure that the children are screened at birth, children are screened in the school. A school health program is very important. Most hypertensions have their seed sown early on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, please don't look for any signs. Get yourself checked regularly. Mr. Desai, I'll come to you on that because he said a lot of, uh, you know, these diseases are silent killers, which means we are actually, uh, you know, in the throes of a possible medical emergency as well. So India requires, I would reckon, a better emergency setup. Do we have one? What are your views to that? So I would say um, the kind of emergencies that um, I deal in at Americas are really larger emergencies, uh, not the not the one-on-one -on -one emergencies. And there, I would say uh, India certainly requires a way to look at it. Uh, when we talk of uh, emergencies or disasters, uh, natural disasters affect 500 million people in India. Uh, and every year with the temperature rise, the number of episodes is going up. So when a, when a person is evacuated, you can imagine that he or she has no idea that she's being evalu evacuated. And if she's a diabetic, if she's, an anti if she's on anti-hypertensive, mm -hmm. she has no stocks of that and she's just taken up from home and kept in a shelter. So that's at the individual level. When it comes to a community, you can imagine uh, when they are put in, put in a, a, a very crowded, unhygienic shelters, mm -hmm. the chances of and lack of safe, safe drinking water, sanitation, the chances of disease outbreak and infectious disease and so on goes up. But most important aspect that I want to bring out here is uh, the health centers. Many times uh, the health centers uh, are, in a, are in a functional situation, but because of uh, the access, they cannot be accessed. But large times, the health center themselves are inundated. The infrastructure is damaged. Second most important is the, the equipment is damaged. And third, uh, the human resource in a health center. The, those who are supposed to provide service are the affected ones. So therefore, when we look at, uh, at AmeriCares as to how mm -hmm. do we kind of look at the disaster, we focus on three aspects. One is preparedness, second is pre-positioning, and third is resilience. So when we look at a country-wide uh, strategy, I, have, I would suggest that we should look at think before and after. So I, we must admit here that uh, India, perhaps the government mechanism, be it NDRF, NDMA, the, the district administration, we are excellent at rescue. Yes. We are perhaps good at relief, but when it comes to particularly in healthcare, uh, rescue and relief is not important, or rather the, the, the before and after is more important. So I would say that we must think before and after. Mm -hmm. uh, we must learn from previous disasters. And last but not the least, I would focus on think collaboration and think partnerships. You were talking about uh, civic partnership, and I would reckon that is very important. An entity that has been striving to improve the quality of life of underprivileged communities is also the Hans Foundation. One of the several programs it has implemented in this regard is free congenital heart surgeries for children. Let's take a look at some of the lives that they've touched in an extremely positive way. <music> Soon after being blessed with a baby girl, Hoshiarpur's Sharma family was faced with the fear of losing their beloved daughter. Birth के तुरंत बाद ही इसकी growth नहीं हो पाती थी और fever जो है वो बिल्कुल नहीं जाता था। इको कराया तो पता लगा कि काफी condition इसकी critical है। दोनों pulse जो हैं वो उल्टी थी और heart के अंदर hole काफी बड़ा था। काफी डर से गए थे भी अब तो मुश्किल है क्योंकि इतना एक्सपेंसिव खर्चा करना मेरे लिए प्रॉब्लम थी। एक्सटेंडिंग देम सपोर्ट एट दिस क्रिटिकल टाइम वाज़ द हंस फाउंडेशन। 
यहाँ पर जो है दा हंस फाउंडेशन जो गरे पार्टी में है उनके बारे में पता लगा कि नीडी पर्सन होते हैं उनकी सहायता करते हैं बॉम्बे जाने का खर्चा वहाँ पे रहने का फिर उसके बाद सर्जरी इतना महंगे हॉस्पिटल में जो भी खाना पीना उसकी मतलब मेडिसन एरा वगैरह जो भी है उन्होंने हमारा सारा खर्चा किया मतलब पहले इसकी कंडीशन ऐसी थी कि देख के लगता नहीं था कि बचेगी पर उन्होंने हेल्प करी और डेढ़ साल हो गया है तो कभी उन्होंने इस चीज़ का महसूस भी नहीं होने दिया कि हमने आपके ऊपर इतना पैसा लगाया बहुत ज़्यादा शुक्रिया अदा करती हूँ दहांस फाउंडेशन का कि उन्होंने मेरी बच्ची को दूसरा जन्म दिया है All right now this little girl's life uh, Aditi was touched by the Hans Foundation uh, we are very glad to have her today this evening uh, she's asleep right now Anubala ji aap hi mujhe bataiye Aditi ko kya problem thi aur kya hua aur the Hans Foundation ne aapko kaise approach kiya one month ki thi tabhi matlab pata chala ki iske heart mein problem hai doctor ne to yahi bola ki aap jald se jald matlab क्या करा ट्रीटमेंट करवा लीजिए सर्जरी होनी है इसकी मतलब सर्जरी करा लीजिए हाँ जी तो फिर हमने तो इतनी जल्दी कर नहीं पाते मतलब फाइनेंशियली इतनी कंडीशन अच्छी नहीं है थी द हंस फाउंडेशन ने आपकी कैसे मदद की क्या किया उन्होंने मतलब जैसे ही उनको सारा कुछ बताया तो उन्होंने मतलब सारा इसकी सर्जरी का सारा ही उन्होंने करवाया मतलब एक दो जगह पर भेजा फिर उसके बाद बॉम्बे में भेजा तो वहाँ पे जाने आने का सर्जरी का हॉस्पिटल का सारा ही खर्चा जो है दहांस फाउंडेशन ने उठाया हमने तो कभी नहीं सोचा था कि हम अपने आप से करवा सकेंगे ये जो भी किया उन्होंने ही किया थैंक यू अनुबाला थैंक यू And that's where we are going to stop for a quick break. When we return, uh, we're going to talk a little more. We're going to take few audience questions in this episode of Love You Zindagi on India Today Television and Aaj Tak. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to this very special episode of Love You Zindagi, where we explore the current scenarios of healthcare in India. I have with me eminent personalities and experts in the field to discuss this very pertinent question: which faces this country, healthcare? Now, Mr. Moore, it's heartening that you have this corporate civic partnership, which goes because I think this little girl is a prime example of that today. Indeed. Um, so, therefore, you know, universal health coverage, uh, a reality in India. Uh, what reforms in the health ecosystem are needed what do you think that you know we could have more of these cases yeah the reality is that if i look worldwide mm -hmm. um, there are many countries that are making good progress uh, obviously you need money we are a poor country there's no doubt that that puts some limitation mm -hmm. as to what we can do but um, many countries have moved ahead in the reform one they have made sure that basic public health is universally taken care of 100% of children are vaccinated water is paid attention to rat control is paid attention to tuberculosis is dealt with so many countries have not gone to hospital and clinics before they have sorted this out we have some journey to go with that basic it doesn't that, yeah. cost a lot of money uh, all of our states have that much money uh, but many have done that second they have gone and dealt not yet with hospital care but they've dealt with primary care rwanda a country that is poorer than bihar mm -hmm. has 98% coverage of comprehensive primary care how do they managed to do that they basically decided that they are going to redirect all their investments away from building more hospitals and building more big facilities mm -hmm. into ensuring that the problem that you were raising earlier mm -hmm. of doctors not being there clinics not being there proper structures not being there are dealt with okay. they brought technology one of the first platforms there is a full artificial intelligence platform in primary care mm -hmm. babylon healthcare came out of rwanda uh, because they really spent time trying to address this issue 
And then the third issue, which relates directly to this wonderful case mm -hmm. that we saw, this idea that people need to come up with a large packet of cash when they go to hospital. And this is not just for poor people. Middle class, upper class, beyond a point, there is a limit. You can't come up with the money. Most countries have aspired to go to full cashless mm -hmm. uh, so that you get a certain level of treatment without it costing you anything. And it's a third step, though. It's not something that countries can achieve necessarily with the amount of money we have. Some states in India, mm -hmm. in the south, I think they have gotten to that level of uh, economic development. Mm -hmm. But I would say in the north and many other parts of the country, if we can deal with the first two issues, many of the issues that we are facing today, not necessarily this one, because Could this be is congenital, mm -hmm. we will be able to take care of. Dr. Bang, today, inaccurate diagnosis, medical errors, inappropriate, unnecessary treatment that is meted out, inadequate or, say, unsafe clinical facilities, uh, practices that are surfacing on major issues in healthcare system. Now, how can the government crack down on this? The key, I feel, is partnership. And after some consideration, I have reached to two conclusions about mm -hmm. the government. Number one is government will generally be the median the role of outlier will be with the civil society or the private sector. Second is, governments are like thread. They cannot be pushed beyond a point, they have to be pulled. So what can be the pull partnership exactly has to be that pull. Now a partnership though has to keep four principles in mind for it to be truly effective and solve that long list of grievances. It essentially should lead to decentralization of 4F. Decentralization of funds, function, functionary and fact. Fact is knowledge. Mm -hmm. Unless this four happens, the partnership is not going to serve its true purpose. The goal should be not only universal health coverage or universal health care, it should be universal capacity for health, mm -hmm. empowering finally the individual. Now, Dr. Yadava, the Hans Foundation and the National Heart Institute have been working together for treating cases of uh, congenital heart diseases in children. Can you share with us what is this program? Well, this program is essentially a, a response to the felt need of the society. You know, there is a huge pool of congenital heart disease and uh, generally these diseases are occurring in poor population who can't afford the treatment. Mm -hmm. You know, according to one estimate coming from the All India Institute, uh, 1.5 million children, 15 lakhs children, need heart surgery for congenital defects at any one moment in time. So there is an acute, you know, uh, need, felt need for these surgeries. So Hans Foundation wanted to help financially and give the logistic mm -hmm. support. And we provided the technical support in form of performing uh, heart surgeries for these children. So that was the aim of developing a partnership with a view to helping some of these children, even if that be a drop in the ocean. Well, every drop counts, I would reckon. <laughs> yeah. But Mr. Desai, now AmeriCares has been running medical mobile unit foundations to provide primary health care services, especially in slum areas, with support of the Hans Foundation. Now, what has been the possible impact of this? Sure. So the Hans Foundation and uh, America's India Foundation work together for uh, the urban poor. Clearly, the rapid urbanization has outpaced the growth of health infrastructure in India. And this is one reason why uh, America's and the Hans Foundation came together to introduce a mobile health clinic program, which is based on the four pillars of, uh, I call it ABCD. Uh, a stands for access to primary care, B stands for behavioral change, C is capacity building of healthcare providers, and D is developing referral linkages. Uh, this program currently uh, serves a catchment population of about, of about 600,000 people across 13 municipal wards in Mumbai. Um, to narrate the program, the mobile clinic has a trained uh, medical doctor who provides the consulting, counseling, prescription, and treatment. A trained healthcare educator uh, works with the community volunteers called Arugya Mitras who work on the behavioral change aspects of the community. Uh, we also build the capacity of the Ayush doctors who are practicing in the slums of Mumbai because mm -hmm. in our absence they are the ones who are catering to this community. So it's very important that we are able to build the capacity of these providers 
you build the consciousness of the community and you connect them so that's really the model mm -hmm. uh, the last piece of de -de uh, developing referral linkages is there are com there are people who require specialist intervention so we have a referral uh, network uh, wherein we uh, forward these patients then to government charitable hospitals and even at times to private hospitals so mm -hmm. that's really the program i would say it caters to about 500 plus people every day uh, the program has a specific focus on NCD, which is hypertension, diabetes, and uh, antenatal care and postnatal care. Right. We started in 2012, and uh, we have reached more than uh, a million patients so far. Well, that's good to know. Thank you. <laughs> well, Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's take some questions now from the audience. I'm Dr. P. H. Mishra, Group mm -hmm. CEO, Kalas Hospitals. My question or suggestion is to Dr. Yadav: the infrastructure and the manpower availability in primary health centers is very poor. So what has government done to improve that? They have brought in this Ayushman Bharat, which is a revolution in the healthcare industry. But at the same time, they have limited the cost of procedures so low that all good hospitals or many good hospitals have refused to participate. Hmm. So my suggestion is that they should improve the primary and secondary healthcare in the government organizations and revise and improve cost of procedures in Ayushman care Mm -hmm. so that good hospitals give tertiary care. Government has stopped sending ESI patients to for secondary care to private hospitals. Mm -hmm. So is there anything they are coming up in CGHS, ECHS or Ayushman Bharat? Are they going to revise the rates? Are they going to improve infrastructure in primary and secondary health care? Are they going to do anything like that? Well, uh, to add to you, it is not only ESI, even ECHS have stopped sending patients to the private sector because they have building up their own capacity and I want to compliment them. I, I don't take that as a complaint. That's mm -hmm. a wonderful thing they're doing it. <laughs> Regarding revision, yes, there has been 28 rounds or something mm -hmm. of discussions between the various stakeholders, speciality wise, where the rates have been submitted by negotiation, they have been accepted by the committee. Now it goes to the higher committee and then to the TPAs, and it is only after approval does it get incorporated. So there is an effort for an upward revision. The government has shown an inclination. To what extent? I don't know. Although now the overall health conditions have improved in India, the current challenges are still enormous. The Evolution of the healthcare sector calls for the involvement of all stakeholders and the use of innovation to bridge intent and most important execution. A big thank you to all of our special guests and our audience who took the time and joined us in this wonderful discussion. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Love News in the Day.